Hello and welcome to another painting tutorial. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a Minions Gator Man Bull Snapper from start to finish. Uh, this video is about 50 minutes and uh, I'm just going to show you the finer intricacies of uh, speed painting. So what I have here is uh, obviously the Bull Snapper model from Privateer Press. And I have my uh, homemade wet palette. I've made this with um, just a Tupperware lid, and I've layered down two paper towels on top of that, soaked that with water, and then laid some parchment paper on top of that. Let it soak through for about uh, two to three minutes on each side, and uh, then we can just apply the paint directly on the parchment paper, and it'll keep the paints nice and wet for the duration of our painting session. You'll see uh, throughout this guide, uh, this video tutorial for the entire duration of the video, the paints that I'm applying on the palette right now, they're still going to be wet by the time I'm finished. So it's a good technique and a good tool to have in your painting arsenal when you're doing a model like this and you want to revisit certain colors, especially if you're mixing colors a lot like I am. Okay, so the, f the colors that I'm working with here are mostly Vallejo colors. So I have a Citadel Dark Angel Green on the left there, and that's mixed with a little bit of Vallejo uh, Camo Green, I think it's called. Uh, let me just quickly check that for you. Cayman green is the color. So a little bit of Dark Angel green mixed with Cayman green. And for the darker color, I have, once again, the Cayman green and the Citadel Dark Angel green mixed with a little bit of black. And then my underbelly color is going to be uh, Vallejo Bone and that's mixed with a little bit of Leather Brown as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the top part of the skin the dark color. So I'm going to take my dark mixture and I'm just going to run along the top part of the scales on the back of the bull snapper, not the spines just along the top edge of the tail here. And then I'm going to grab some of my mid color and the highlight color and I'm just going to layer that on just below the dark. And because the paints are wet, you're going to find that what happens is the two colors start to blend together. And I'm just going to use my brush to gently feather it together. Now I'm just taking the straight highlight color and I'm applying it to the underbelly. All along the bottom part of the tail. I'll extend the dark part to the edge of the tail. way down to the legs about halfway down the leg and then I'm going to grab some of the highlight and I'll just do the inside of the leg the inside thigh as well as the foot in the highlight color camera a bit and the angle may be a little bit off. Okay, some more highlights. I'll go reapply on the foot and on the bottom of the tail. And the key here is to work fairly quickly. 
you don't want the paints to actually dry on the model. Once you start working on a section, you want to finish it before moving on to another. And for this wet blending technique, you're going to need the paints to be completely wet. So now I'm taking the mid-tone and I'm blending it together with the dark and then once again applying to the underbelly. You can see how fast I'm working here. Um, I'm not really too concerned if I get some paint on uh, other parts of the, of the model where it shouldn't be. Um, it, it can always be touched up a little bit later. But as always, you should try to be as neat as possible with your, with your painting to limit those touch-ups that you need to do. I'm just doing the same thing on the other side. I'm applying the dark to the top of the back. And then applying a mid-tone just underneath that. And then grab your highlight tone and apply that underneath the mid-tone. And then you just gently use your brush and feather all the colors together. Now, when you're applying a technique like this, especially to something as, as simple as a bull snapper, now, I, I do realize that the bull snapper is, it's a fairly simple model to paint, I'd say. There's, there's not a whole lot of detail to the model. There's not no uh, straps or pouches or anything like that on the guy. It's pretty much just skin, scales, some spines, teeth, uh, not really much to it. So. This technique really lends itself to uh, painting models like this that have limited detail. Um, but when you're doing this technique, uh, you're just sort of, it's half like glazing, half wet blending. You want to prime your model white for sure. Uh, if you prime your model black uh, using this technique, the, the colors are not going to show up on the model as easily. The, the light colors certainly are not going to pop like that. And you'd probably have to do um, two or possibly even three or four coats. So if you're doing a technique like this, definitely prime your model white. I recently attended a uh, painting class, a two-day class with Meg Maples, who is Privateer Press's former studio painter and she actually primes everything in white so while I'm not gonna take it that far uh, to prime everything in white most of the things that you know are darker in color uh, I, I would still prefer to prime black but uh, for guys like this and, and utilizing this technique I would definitely prefer white So now working on the head, I got the dark part on the top of the head and I'm working with the underbelly color underneath the jaw. Yeah, that's a great angle there. <laughs> Sorry about that, uh, I, I didn't realize that the angle was so off until after I'd finished filming and I'm superimposing this audio over top after, after the fact. Okay, so light color on the underbelly, and I'm just feathering it lightly into the mid color. I'm just sort of touching that all up while it's wet, because you don't want this paint to dry. If it does, you're going to get streaks of color, as opposed to a nice smooth gradation of color. Yeah, and just working down the back. And I'm not, I'm trying not to apply any paint to the spines. The spines will be a different color. I'll just uh, reassess the model after I'm done, see if there's any colors that need uh, a reapplication to make it pop like the underside of the tail was still looking a little bit too green so I'm reapplying the light underbelly color to 
to that. And there's a close up, hopefully, you can see that a little more clear. Okay. So the uh, the Gatorman army really lends itself to this technique. A lot of the guys in this army, particularly the beasts, are this uh, can be done using this technique. Uh, some of the more complex models, like the Warcasters, sorry, the Warlocks and the um, Gatorman Witch Doctor, they might require you to, you know, take a little bit extra time because they are much more detailed than models like this. But I did do this particular bull snapper, and I did uh, three others, all within the span of I would say maybe three hours. So now uh, the spines, I'm going to be doing this dark green color. I'm I'm just going to base it with the same mid tone green. Do be careful not to overlap onto any of the work that you've already done, because then you'll have to go back and retouch up those areas. And when you're working for speed, that that's always a fine balance, right? Whether you want to work really fast and maybe be a little bit sloppy, but you don't want to be so sloppy that you'll need to retouch up certain areas, because that'll just extend your painting time. So just a quick base coat on the spines, on the back. Now when you're doing a base coat like this, it's, it's okay for the paint to dry on the model. It's actually preferable for the purposes of this tutorial um, just because I, I wanted to get it done quickly uh, to, to demonstrate the, the speed that you can do this technique at uh, and I was trying to keep my overall time of the video down I, I didn't bother to let the base coat dry so uh, maybe it's a little bit more wet than it should be when I start applying highlights and shading so this is uh, what color is that again? Uh, as you can see, I, I just recently switched over to a bunch of P3 paints, so you'll see me opening a bunch of them in this particular video. Uh, that color is coal black from the P3 range, Formula P3. Sorry, it's not coal black, it's exile blue. Yeah, exile blue, and I mixed a tiny bit of black in there. Just gonna apply a little bit of, a uh, little bit more Cayman green to my mid mixture. So what I actually intend to do here is I wanna highlight up from the Exile Blue, which will be my shade, to the Cayman Green, which will be my mid-tone, uh, to the Vallejo Bone, mixed with a bit of Leather Brown for the final highlight. And then it'll be, uh, it'll be an interesting uh, gradation from uh, dark blue to a medium green to a light greenish brown type of mixture. Yeah, that'll be my highlight for the spines. You can see it'll be sort of a light green-brown mixture. Okay, so ideally, at this stage, you, you want your base coat on the spines to be dry. But, again, for the sake of expediency of this video, 
it's not quite completely dry, but I just have to sort of improvise and perform a slightly improvised technique on the wet blend. You can see here I'm just trying to do my standard technique, but because in the deep recesses of the spines it's not completely dry yet, it's kind of preventing me from getting a decent gradation without pulling the base coat up and seeing white underneath. Also, these colors, uh, they seem to be a little, little on the translucent side. Uh, it's possible maybe my inexperience with the P3 paints, maybe I'm watering it down a little bit too much. But regardless, what, what I'll probably end up having to do here is two, two coats of this highlight on the spines, which is not terrible. You just do it once, it may look a little bit rough, and then you let the paint dry, the coat dry completely, and then you do the exact same technique over top, and it will smooth everything out and make everything look deeper and richer. So the technique here is a uh, dark color in the recesses and then your mid color right over top, not overlapping, well maybe overlapping very very slightly. And then you just use your wet brush and uh, feather the two colors together gently and it'll create a, a nice smooth gradation of colors and then you apply the highlight color on the very tip of the spine and then work that down into the mid-tone. And you can experiment with colors too. Um, I don't know, maybe a lot of people might not think to shade green with a dark blue, but the two colors actually work together fairly well and, and look quite appealing, on, especially on uh, aquatic creatures like the bull snapper. It gives it sort of that uh, deep sea type color feel, like sea turtles and some octopuses and things like that. The Exile Blue is a good color too. Um, I experimented a little bit with it in uh, Meg's painting class. Uh, she actually suggested that you use it to shade um, silver metallics, which is an interesting concept. And uh, yeah, it works quite well. So now just working on the edge of the spines on the tail the dark color and I'm just feathering in the mid color now just take your time with this technique you might want to work on uh, larger areas than you know the spines of a bull snapper when you're starting out this is definitely an advanced technique and if you're a novice painter or new to the hobby you you, you can jump right in and, and you can attempt this technique especially if you're you know uh, artistically inclined but uh, don't be frustrated if it doesn't work out for you right away this, this technique takes time to hone and it's not it's not an easy technique to master So now I'm actually going to reapply a second coat onto the previous spines that I did before just because it, it wasn't looking that great uh, because my base coat wasn't dry. So now that it's dry I'm just going to reapply a second coat and it'll smooth everything out and make it look fantastic.
So now, unfortunately, the camera angle can't really pick it up. What I'm doing is I'm sort of improvising a little bit on on the technique because the the paints are a little more translucent than I usually work with. Um, I'm actually not I'm not using standard brush strokes to work the colors together. I'm actually sort of stippling the colors in. So I'll, I'll slap down the Exile Blue first and then I'll take my green mixture and I'll apply it with the brush beside the Exile Blue. And I just sort of take my brush and sort of poke around at the, at the mid-tone green and sort of just, it's almost like stabbing it into the Exile Blue. And you can see uh, close up there, looks pretty good so far. And I'm just going to start working on the other side of the spines. Again, I apologize for the camera angle. Mm. I'll, uh, I'll figure out a better angle to set up the tripod when, uh, when I do my next video, but just bear with me here. While we're on the subject of paints, uh, it, some people ask me if I have any preference as it comes to paints, and honestly, I, I don't. I find them all more or less the same. It, it's really more a, a matter of how you like to well, the, the particular containers that the paints come in. Personally, I despise the GW pots of paint, uh, and I always have actually ever since they changed from those flip top uh, hexagonal hexagonal uh, pots and I'm talking about the old ones, the ones with the white lids um, having said that though I did use GW paints right up until more recently simply because they're the most easily accessible uh, they're the only paints sold by my local gaming store but I've since moved on to Vallejo's, uh, the game color range, which has all the identical colors to the Games Workshop range, uh, just in a handy, more convenient um, dropper bottle type dispenser. That's not to say that the Vallejo's don't have their problems too. Sometimes the cap and get a little gummed up and then when you go to squeeze paint out you just get a you get a, a steady stream of paint coming out as opposed to a drop or two and uh, recently in, in Meg's class she really she really promoted the use of P3 paints and I mean it's it's not because she is she was a former employee of the company she wasn't even working for the company at that particular time she just honestly believed that they were superior paints. So I decided to give them a try and I mean so far they're they're okay. I don't really notice too much of a difference. At any rate, you use what you uh, whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever is easily accessible. Um, if you can order them online then great order them online. But uh, yeah, personally, I'm I'm a big fan of the Vallejos, and uh, I probably will be a fan of the P3s because I, I do like the flip top caps on the P3s as well. Okay, so we're just about done the spines. I'm just gonna do a few touch-ups here highlight was not quite looking sharp enough on some of them so I'm just going to build that up a little bit and just a few touch ups on the belly I'm going to do 
do some wet blending just on the brow just to add a little bit of extra dimension to the uh, facial features on this guy. Just hit a few highlight areas and blend that down to the mid-tone. And just a little bit of shade in the deep recesses of the head. Just gonna shade in a couple of the crevices in the throat. And just clean up a little bit of the spine area. Again, very, very important that you keep your paints wet. Um, this is why I use the wet palette now. Uh, I typically don't use a, a dry palette for hardly anything anymore. Uh, it's mostly all wet palette work. And, I mean, based on the technique that I'm, I'm using here, you can, you can see why. It's just very advantageous to always have your paints wet. And you can revisit the colors anytime you want. And within, you know, typically the next four hours, these paints will still be wet. Okay, so now I'm going to start working on the uh, mouth area. So I'm just going to grab some blood red. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of green. Um, as you know, or hopefully you know that red and green are complementary colors on the color wheel, meaning they're opposites. So if you mix complementary colors on a color wheel, they will, it'll darken one, it'll darken up the color. So red, if you mix a bit of green into it, it's going to darken up the red. So I'm just going to apply a base coat of this red all on the inside of the mouth. It's okay if you get the paint on the teeth. Uh, we're going to pick the teeth out individually later. Just want to make sure you get a solid coat. Again, this is just a base coat, so you can work relatively quickly. Just want to be careful not to get any of the red on the green. You'll have to touch that up, and given the the darkness of the color, to, for you to go back and touch up the green, it would be time consuming. You probably have to do a couple of coats to cover up the red completely. So just be a little careful when you're picking out details like this in the later stages. I'm just going to do a, a dark green, very dark green, mix a little bit of blue in the eye cavities, just to give it sort of like a line, uh, an eyeliner type effect for the bull snapper, just to make the eyes really pop when I paint them in. Okay. 
doing a quick glance over to see if there's any touch-ups needed. That is great coat gray. And that is the color I'm going to use on the rock that is underneath the bull snapper's foot. I'm just doing the base coats of the areas that you know I'll need to finish off. The the red on the inside of the mouth, ideally I want that to be dry when I revisit that. So instead of wasting time just letting it sit there or take a break, go get a snack or whatever, you, know, you can keep you can keep trucking along and just look for other parts of the model that you can work on while that section dries. And you know that may be one of the more important keys to speed painting your models is just keep trucking. You know, just keep working at the model. Uh, if you're waiting for a section to dry, look at the model and determine if there's another section of the model you can work on while that while that area dries. You can just alternate back and forth. Just gonna touch up some of the mouth area in there. Really more just highlighting the edge of the mouth. So this is, um, I believe it's Mephiston Red from the GW range. It's a slightly darker red. And this is Menoth White Highlight. So I'm just going to mix the two together to create sort of a uh, purplish pink red color. So now I'm just going to pick out the, I don't know what you call this thing, that little flap of skin in between the, the jaws of the bull snapper. I'm just going to pick out red on the higher areas. I'll do the same on the other side. We're just carefully picking out the raised areas. And I'll use a little bit of the dark red to retouch up any of the recesses that I might have got with the brighter red. So I'm going to use a straight uh, Mephiston red to highlight the uh, sides of the tongue. And I'll grab my highlight pink and just wet and blend some highlights onto the tongue. Just gently work the highlight color into the into the base red. And then if you need to, you can exaggerate the shading with the uh, original dark red color on the tongue. 
Now I'm just picking out uh, some of those ridges on the uh, flap of skin between the jaws. Let's give it a little extra highlight. Now, if you'd like, um, I, I do this when I do airbrushing, um, but you can do it when you're just painting a model by hand as well. You can see sometimes when I'm painting uh, the model, I'm, I'm holding it with my left hand and my fingers are, you know, sort of rubbing against the model. You can see here I have contact on the model. Sometimes if your paint application is thin, your finger can actually uh, just rub some of the paint off and you'll get down to almost bare primer again and uh, you really want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, when I'm conscious of that uh, sometimes I'll wear a just one of the latex medical gloves on my left hand um, because it will prevent any of the oils from your skin getting onto the model it, it can also prevent that abrasion that will rub the paint off so that's something you might want to do if you find that your hand is rubbing a lot of the paint off as well I don't know how many people actually have that problem but occasionally it, it does happen to me and it can be pretty frustrating when it does okay so uh, I've just grabbed a little bit of white and I've really pop the highlights on the that flap of skin in, be, in between the jaws okay so now I'm just doing a, a, an edger for the claws the toenails and the uh, fingernails so I'm just taking the dark green and I'm just edging where the claws will be uh, what will happen is I'll have the highlight color on my on the feet of the model and on the hands of the model and then it'll be edged by a thin line of this dark green and then I'll actually do the claw color and that way the the claws will really pop they'll they'll stand out a, a lot more from just sort of being amalgamated into the flesh of the foot this will create a separation line that will really make the, the claws pop. And you'll see that in the end result. So now I've got some of the Vallejo bone color and I'm just picking out the teeth. I'm just being very careful. I'm trying to pick out each individual tooth. Uh, if you really wanted, you could just paint. Uh, with the bull snapper, the way it works is the way they sculpted the teeth is they've done like two or three teeth in one section, and they're just sort of separated into these clusters of teeth uh, that are, you know, a couple of millimeters apart on the model but there's like two or three teeth per cluster. So if you really wanted to, you could just uh, hit the entire cluster of teeth with the bone and then go in and wash it to separate the teeth. Uh, you could do it that way. Uh, personally, I prefer to just pick out each individual tooth. That way I can have like a definitive, almost black line in between each tooth. You can see I've got some white on the tongue accidentally, so I just quickly clean off my brush and wipe it across on the tongue and 
if you do that enough, you can you can eliminate any errors like that. As long as the paint's not dry, of course. Now working on the bottom jaw, picking out each individual tooth. Uh, for anyone that wants to know the, the brushes I'm using, these are Winsor Newton Series 7. Uh, I'm, I typically only use uh, the size 2 brush for everything. Now I'm just picking out the eyes with a straight white. Now moving on to the fingernails. Just picking those out with the Vallejo bone. Toenails, same thing. Okay, so now I'm taking my dark blue mix and I'm mixing it in with a little bit of the bone color. And this color, I'm just sort of hitting the rock and highlighting it up. And then I grab some of the shade color and work that into the highlight. And just sort of blends the rock together. And you just want to do some alternating gradations on the rock. Uh, it doesn't have to be realistic. You don't need like to work with a particular light source. You sort of want to, well, I sort of wanted to stagger the gradations a bit to separate the, the jags in the rocks. And when you do that, it can really make the rock pop a lot more. I'm going to take some still photographs uh, and I'll see if I can attach them to the to the back end of this video. Uh, I'm still sort of experimenting with this software and I'm not really sure how to like splice things like that together, but we'll see if I can figure it out. Okay, so now we're down to the very fine details. At, at this stage, you, you could call your model done. You just gotta hit the eyes up with whatever color you wanted to. And you could, you could call it a day. Uh, I just wanna give a little bit of depth to the teeth and the claws. 
So I'm mixing a dark brown that's with uh, Vallejo charred brown and a mix of leather brown that's in the top left of my palette. And a little bit of black as well. So I mix all three of those together and it gives you a nice dark brown. And this is a straight leather brown. And a straight white. See that uh, Citadel pot there? That's, uh, that, those are the pots of Citadel that I like. Anything after that, I was not, I'm not very keen on those paints. So what I'm doing is a three-stage uh, blending process here on the nails. I'm doing my dark brown mixture and then I'm doing a leather brown beside that, blending those two together, and then I'm gonna hit the very tip of the nail with a uh, straight white, the skull white. And we'll do that on each individual toenail and each individual fingernail, and we'll probably go into the teeth as well. If you don't have these colors, I, I highly recommend them. I, I use these three colors on practically every single model. Uh, I do prefer natural colors, um, more natural uh, skin tones and things that you would find in, in the real world as opposed to like the GW style of painting where you have, you know, your Empire halberdiers Albert years with uh, you know bright blue, red, and yellow. Uh, I don't I don't appreciate that paint style. It, it makes them look like you know humans from the land of Lego or something like that. So uh, charred brown, Vallejo, and leather brown. And what is the actual bone color on Vallejo? Bone white. Those three colors I use on almost everything. And, and you can find the equivalent uh, of those colors in almost any, any of the other paint ranges as well. You can use this for these colors on nails like I'm doing here on teeth. You can use it for uh, bones, skulls. You can use it for leather tunics. My mixture is pretty much almost the same for all of those. Um, if you go to the Hobby Hysteria article that I wrote for uh, my good friend Jamie on his blog, the, you'll see pictures of the Gitterman Witch Doctor that I did as well. His tunic is the same colors as what I'm doing here with the teeth and the nails. It's just a mix of black, uh, charred brown, and leather brown. And you're blending that to a leather brown. And you're blending that to a bone white. Probably more a bone white mixed with a little bit of leather brown. So I've sort of created a, a glaze with the with these colors now, and I'm just sort of washing it across the teeth. Makes it easier to blend it. It's just sort of a nice gradation there, and I'm just picking out some <laughs> picking out nostrils, I suppose, you know, in a certain way with the dark green. Okay, so now I'm just gonna use a little bit of yellow just as a highlight color for the eye. Mix it with a little bit of red. It's 
I'll paint the eyeball with a mix of yellow and red. And then I'll grab a little bit of red. And I'm just going to plant some of that around the yellow. a little bit of white and yellow just to give a really sharp hit of color on the eyeball and you may not care to do this but um, honestly it's little fine details like this that really make the model uh, stand out and really pop and you know it doesn't take long to do Just gonna retouch up some of the spines. Like I said earlier, some of my uh, some of the paint got a little a little weathered off by my finger. So I'm just gonna pick out those areas again. And, and again, the, the advantage of having the wet palette to be able to revisit these colors, you know, almost an, almost an hour later, it's really really key because otherwise I'd have to remix these colors and. Honestly, you don't always get the same mixture that you did before. So wet palette, key to success when using this technique. Okay, and that is the complete model. I'll see if I can get some uh, photographs attached to the end of this video. Alright, bull snapper, 52 minutes, 44 seconds.